Well, thank you everyone uh, for joining and thank you for all our great speakers for joining us today. And yeah, firstly, I suppose, big up to England for getting through to the next phase, beating Germany, which is always a very difficult task, but they've managed to do so. And then, and if there are guys supporting Germany too, you've had a, a plent plenty more successes. So let, let England have one, I guess. So uh, anyhow, um, yeah, so the focus today, we'll be talking about e-commerce from our uh, selected speakers who've been in their own right in different platforms and different means in the e-commerce space, been very successful in what they've been doing. So it'll be an open opportunity to learn from their experiences, also learn more so about tips and guidances that they can provide to all of us to 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 better nail e-commerce. So my, my name is Gold Singh. I represent Awesome, where we provide bookkeeping and accounting services focused on e-commerce businesses, and I'm the partnerships lead there. So have a quick round of introductions. So if uh, Mike, if you can go first, just give us give the guys a quick introduction of yourself, what you do, and uh, that'll be great. Cool. Hey guys, uh, my name's Mike. I'm from Birmingham, UK. Uh, I'm a full-time reseller. Uh, I jumped in with both feet full-time from the very beginning. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been doing it for about two years now. Uh, I'm not a seven-figure seller, but I have built my stock from absolutely zero. Uh, well, I started with my story is I started with 20 pounds in my back pocket, uh, and I've now got nearly 300,000 pounds worth of stock in my showroom. Um, and my dream was always to own an antique shop, uh, and I started out just selling little bits and bobs on eBay, uh, and then now I have, like I say, over a quarter of a million pounds worth of stock. Uh, and I'm living the dream. I'm, I've got the job of my dreams, and uh, yeah, and uh, I, I sell on different platforms, so eBay, Facebook Marketplace, uh, and we've just recently built our own e-commerce site, uh, which is treasuresoftime.co.uk, uh, and that's still in development. It's it's live now, but we're still there's a lot of things going on with that as well. Cool. Thanks a lot for that, Mike. And yeah, great to know, you know, what 20 pounds can achieve in, in you know, if, if there's drive, motivation and uh, hunger to, to succeed. Zane, if you can go next, uh, that'll be great. Uh, my name is Zane Cha and uh, I sell full time on eBay and Amazon, uh, both of them. And uh, I've been a full-time seller for a pretty long time now. And on eBay, I have nearly around 10,000 listings. We have a two stores. And uh, during the whole process of selling, we launched 201 private labels on Amazon as well. And uh, I've been full-time for pretty much about seven to eight years now. And that's all about me, really. Amazing. Again, you know, uh, great what one can achieve with the persistence and the diversifying in the different listings and the 200 plus was that probably that's that's pretty, yeah. pretty impressive and must be. And great. just to add, not all of them been really successful, but we launched 200, yeah. over 200, exactly 204, but been really good journey so far. Amazing. Uh, thanks for saying, uh, sharing that, Zane. Shimmy, if you want to go next, please. Hey, um, Shimmy Morris from London. I, uh, I started selling on Amazon about seven years ago. Uh, we did a whole bunch of private label products from Amazon. We went into training. Um, from that, we went into YouTube. And that's how my YouTube channel started. And that's how affiliate marketing started. Um, throughout that, I also did print on demand, um, which is a lot of fun if you like designing t-shirts and just random stuff, really. Um, now I focus on, well, yeah, exactly. Now I focus on um, various different things, mainly YouTube. I love teaching and all that kind of stuff and just explaining the process in a much more simple way. Um, as well as that, I have my podcast um, where we talk about um, everything you should have learned when you were in school, um, high school really, so about money, life, finances, all of that kind of stuff, health, wealth. And um, and yeah, now I pretty much do full time uh, Amazon print on demand and YouTube. And that's that's me. Amazing. Thanks for uh, sharing that, Shami. Again, wearing many hats and uh, trying uh, what what works to succeed and finding your your niches or niches as whichever way one wants to pronounce it. Exactly. Since we're recording this, many well from Europe will stick to niche. That's okay. <laughs> and uh, finally, Dan, if you can share a bit about yourself, please, as well. Yeah, sure. So I'm Dan Rogers. 
And uh, I kind of like that a lot of the the uh, guests we have today are, are in all different business models because actually how it started for me was testing all these different business models. I knew I wanted to do something myself. Uh, and as you can probably hear, I'm from uh, South Africa originally, but I also live in the UK, like uh, a lot of you guys uh, do. But through testing various models, I actually started with a website building where I would be an affiliate for people's Amazon products. So that's how I started until I kind of worked out it would be better in terms of profits to actually build the end product. And that's how I got into private label. So that's my focus, uh, similar to some of the components of what the others do here is private label with FBA. And then after figuring that one out, and I really loved that model because it was quite simple. It was, you know, buy for one, sell for three in terms of uh, the Amazon model because they have their fees as well. But I love that simple model. So then I began uh, teaching people as well. And I liked what Shumi said about enjoying teaching people. Uh, I find the same uh, kind of feeling with that very enjoyable as well. So that's my focus now is uh, my private label business and then YouTube as well. Um, but yeah, that's me. Brilliant. Thanks for sharing that, Dan. And yeah, it's again quite inspiring where different different ways to, to success and uh, never giving up and trying methods and means which uh, will work and it can be specific to everyone. Everyone has their own journey, which is definitely quite interesting and inspiring with the different speakers we have today. Brilliant. So I'm going to just quickly share a quick presentation uh, on e-commerce. Uh, uh, we felt would be interesting to share just for a few minutes and then we'll go into a panel discussion thereafter. Just bear with me, guys. So we wanted to quickly look at a few different things that have been changing in the e-commerce space, more so over the past 14 months. Uh, naturally, one key driver for that where businesses had to adapt a lot more so, especially with motor businesses to um, create avenues where they have to be able to succeed online, but also that gave birth to a lot of um, uh, tough situations where people were stuck with uh, not many things to do and uh, job losses and, and so on. And But there was a great strive and fight within uh, m many individuals and entrepreneurs to find a way to try and succeed online. So it has been 2020 a historic year for e-commerce sales globally which obviously was a one big driver, but it's not as uh, easy as just trying something online. You have to be persistent and find ways to succeed. And then moving on, so a few things in terms of social media, that's been a huge driver for new embedment in social media. There's a lot more ways nowadays to use different types of apps and uh, ways to sell within social media by needing to, to leave the platform, and that's something that has been growing quite extensively also in the last 18 months or so. And then one thing that we find interesting is uh, more embedment in within social media. Taking an example out of uh, China, where it's very popular for influencers and other, other, other individuals to pretty much be running live streams and be selling uh, directly to consumers on, in regards to IG Live, their own equivalent. So that's something that's anticipated to be growing quite a lot over the coming months and years in UK and Europe. And then in regards to more e-commerce embedment embedded on social media during the first long lockdown, 20% of purchases were made by social media, which is pretty impressive in regards to the, the previous year. And then a lot of people are more and more likely if the messaging, if the branding, if the, the way individuals are creating content and finding ways to link that with product has been something buyers are more and more receptive towards. And then in regards to 24% of UK businesses decided to find ways to create more opportunities via social media. And that's something that over the course of the next 12, 18, 24 months, we anticipate to, to be growing quite extensively. Marketplaces will come out uh, on top, which is still not a, an existing exciting trend per se, but it's something that is only growing 
and something that's also hugely grown over the course of uh, the last 18 months. I think we may have all come across uh, Jeff Bezos as well, uh, skyrocketing to him making, becoming the, the richest person alive. That's because of the amount of uh, shares he holds in Amazon and a lot of adop uh, adaptation to, to the Amazon marketplace. So what's interesting in regards to who owns the e-commerce space within the UK, these are some of the the dimensions as to where the majority of the traffic is growing. Amazon still is maintaining the lion's share of the traffic and uh, presence when it comes to internet shoppers, online shoppers seeking their products from Amazon. eBay is not far behind, but then the traditional players such as your Sainsbury's, Tesco, Walmart, John Lewis, a few others that are in the UK have also really started to invest a lot of uh, time and energy into ensuring some of that traffic and some of that audience when it comes to purchasing product online. And then the other thing which is quite interesting is emerging markets. So that can be within Europe or outside Europe where there's a better uh, service offering in regards to marketplaces, especially if you look at Asia. So awesome, you can also work across Asia with a lot of e-commerce companies over there. And that's also been growing quite extensively over the last 18 months. So it's not necessarily EU and US are always the, the only places uh, we can find ways to sell online. Perhaps it'll be a bit trickier entering Asia, but not as hard as we think. So that's something that we've seen now in regards to emerging markets will play a huge role where it comes to saturation in markets across Europe, markets across um, US. You know, not is everyone targeting, let's say, Asian e-commerce. So potentially there's uh, more space, you know, for the right products in different emerging markets, which definitely is something that I think people should consider as well as looking at, of course, UK, Europe, uh, US, but there's, let's say for the Amazon example, they're in Singapore, they're in Japan, they're in Dubai, they're in lots of different countries. So perhaps there is different territories entirely where not everyone is present as yet. And yeah, I think on our side, the tackle the future with confidence and ultimately it's uh, an open world and lots of opportunity out there. On our side with Awesome, we are uh, e-commerce accounting experts uh, as to what we provide. And now I'll hand over the stage to the speakers to, to share some of their own personal stories. So the first uh, topic we wanted to look at um, is the personal journey to growing a successful e-commerce business. What's quite interesting is everyone's come from their own um, different environments and found a niche that has been working really well for them. So if we can start with Shimmy, in terms of your personal journey from where you started, what kind of were your, your challenges and up and victories perhaps to, to where you're at at this moment in terms of your e-commerce and your, your business operation? Okay. Um, well, like I said before, I started in 2014, um, end of 2014. And the hardest bit was, was finding the first product and learning how to, how to find a product. But I think saying that the hardest element of all of it is um, the idea of having a failed product and realizing that it's not a big deal and it's very normal. And many of our products have failed. And, and again, I've seen so many people um, just through you know teaching and helping other people I see so many people where their first product or one of their products fails and as soon as they have a failed product that's it you know the hand the towel in it's done it's over but in actual fact a failed product is um, can be a lot better than a successful product because you learn so much more from a failed product um, of what not to do um, so our first product actually ended up being quite successful um, our second two weren't as successful and then we went on like a crazy five or six run of successful products. Um, and then we had a, a couple more uh, random failures. And again, that's just with Amazon. In terms of where I went from there, which was um, YouTube, I think the, the, the hardest bit about the YouTube journey for me was the, the constant persevering through it. Um, even though, you know, my first videos, or my, my first videos, my first few hundred videos we're getting, you know, between ten and fifty views, and I, I, I did a, I did a one hundred day challenge when I first started YouTube, and it lasted about two hundred and fifty days of posting every single day, and I think I got like three and a half thousand subscribers from that, 
Um, and by the end, my videos were getting maybe a hundred views. Um, and even then at that point, it, I wasn't making any money from it. It was just like, what the hell am I doing? Um, and that taught me one of the biggest lessons, which is just, you know, persevering and not giving up. If something is difficult, if something you don't see an immediate, uh, uh, an immediate reward, then it doesn't matter. I mean, the whole get rich quick schemes that are all over the internet now are such, are such rubbish. And you've really got to, you know, pay for the long game. So think five years in the future, think, you know, 10 years in the future, hopefully, you know, not everyone can do that because some people have expenses and things that they have to pay for right now. Um, but if you have the, if you have the, um, the luxury, I should say, the luxury of being able to look five years in the future and plan for five years in the future, it, it broadens that, 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 that room, that, that room for failure. Um, and it kind of makes it non-existent because you can fail a hundred times in that five years, as long as by the end of the five years, you kind of come through. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's with Amazon and YouTube in terms of print on demand. I got really lucky with print on demand. I should say I, my designs took off very quickly. Um, now it's a bit different. It's a lot more competitive, a lot more oversaturated. And, um, again, I think, I think all of these different businesses, Amazon, print on demand, YouTube, doesn't matter what physical, digital, whatever it is, the one true consistent thing of all of them is just, are you going to stick with it until you see it work? Or are you going to stop as soon as it gets difficult or stop when it, uh, when, when something doesn't work, when something doesn't go your way. And, you know, if you're the person who can stick with it, then you'll be absolutely fine. So, yeah, that's um, quite inspiring. I think you had you mentioned a hundred day challenge, which lasted two hundred fifty days. Yeah, that, that was just uh, dogged pers perseverance to, to keep going and keep keep moving and until you know you get what you're uh, adamant on. So kudos to you for keep keep going and yeah, thanks for sharing sharing your insights and story. Um, Dan, if you can uh, go next, please. For sure, I think. Uh... I can lead on from what Jimmy said as well. Uh, when I began, actually, I kind of took the the plunge with it because I actually sold my car to fund my first order for two reasons. One, to fund the order, but two, because that would kind of lock me into, you know, get things done, work on this. Um, and so that's what I did. And I started, I remember the first order uh, cost about three thousand dollars a portion of that those funds and i remember the first product worked really well and that's still a product i sold today uh, and then as shimmy said then i had a failed product quite similarly to him and then i had a really successful product and that's what i would model on from <coughs> uh, from that point onwards um, and at that same time, I had another failed one. So there was two failures in the initial period and two successes. But that taught me exactly what to focus on. Um, and then I just started replicating that, double downing on, on exactly what worked. So it does take time. And I think another thing is choosing the wrong product is never the problem. It's having way too much inventory of the wrong product because you can always change the idea it's having too much. That's another thing I learned is don't over order. It's much better. It's a lesser evil to run out of stock, you know, than have, that's always the biggest problem I think you can face with private label um, and FBA is having, you know, 2000 units, you cannot move. That's really the issue there. Uh, so really that, I mean, that was the initial part and now, uh, one of those orders could cost $33,000. So when you look back on it, it's like this, the smaller amount of capital really grew into something a lot bigger. Um, and you can 100% do that. You just have to persevere. They are going to be, but now luckily, I think you, you know, you have the internet, you have people to learn from for free, for totally for free. So don't order, you know, 3000 units of a product you're not quite sure on. Order less, learn from people who will tell you that and then order less and keep going. So you don't have to make those huge fumbles. Um, but really that that's just an intro to it, go. Um, and then 
I do have some points here on, you know, if I was to start again, what I would change, but I think that may be a different segment. We'll, we'll go into we'll go into uh, the next, but yeah, thanks for sh okay. uh, sharing that, uh, Dan. But yeah, sure. it's a good commitment and a scary one as well. But you are adamant in terms of what you wanted us to uh, selling a car to pursue your your dreams and your focus. And as you mentioned, is uh, there's no such thing as a bad product. It's having too much of the bad product, and then you know being kind of uh, not necessarily pessimistic, but being cautious and resourceful with what can and uh, cannot work and being quite adaptive. Um, great. Um, Mike, if you can go next, please. Okay, so um, so yeah, my journey, I, I basically, when I started, I was at rock bottom in my life. I'd lost everything. And I think going back to the, the perseverance thing and uh, yeah, you, you've got to be perseverant. You, you, I've had businesses in the past that have failed and, and, and when I started this journey, this chat, we'll call this the chat, this chapter of my life, um, I, like I say, was at rock bottom. I had nothing. And my, my challenges at the beginning were being able to provide an income, being able to pay bills. Um, and basically, I remember I had a conversation when I first started with my partner and I said, look, even if I can just do 25 pounds a day to start with, and that was my target, and and that's it. That that seems so like so long ago now, but that was my target, and it was set, set myself a goal and 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 try and achieve small targets every and and every month. I just increase that and increase that and increase that um, to a point where I could afford to buy stock. And I think, yeah, it's with business you've got to make sure that you you don't rush into everything um and and take things slow and and set yourself like small baby steps i think and that's how i got from nothing to to something um so that makes sense no yeah i think uh, it's um it can be you know very difficult to to have uh, difficult situations but then still kind of persevering i think that's kind of the key premise but Beyond that, it's uh, people think it's easy, it's simple. People like to see at the end of the the, the, the journey that it's always been simple and, and easy. And these kind of it's, it's uh, really appreciate you you sharing your your story okay. in that context. And you know you've uh, done pretty well with the the, the Jordan jerseys hanging behind. <laughs> you. <laughs> it, yeah, it's crazy. I think as well like research as well. So like one yeah. of the things that resonated with me is um, someone was like. How many um, how many TV series have you watched? How many computer games are you playing? Um, like what? How how many hours have you put into watching Breaking Bad or whatever? And you work it out, and you 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 will put hundreds of hours into that. But people don't realize if you if you just sacrificed that playing the PlayStation or watching a box set and and researched what you want to actually go into, um, then. You, you can make something from it. And I, I think that's a lot of people just will not put the hours in uh, and won't do the research behind um, the, what they want to do. I think that's one of, one of the things for me is everything I do, I research and make sure that I know I've, I've thought of all the outcomes or what, what the possibilities are, how, how much I'm going to make from this product and how, who's selling it, what's my competition and things like that. So I think research is a massive part of it as well. Yeah, d definitely. I think um, you guys are adamant, uh, sorry, uh, examples of, you know, research, being meticulous, being focused on what you're doing is paramount to success in it. And it takes it takes time. There's, there's no shortcuts. So, yeah, uh, thanks for sharing uh, your, your insights and story, Mike. And Zane, finally, if you can uh, share yours as well, it would be great. Thanks. So... It's a long story. I will keep it short. Uh, grab your popcorn in the meantime. So let's let's really get started. Uh, I was uh, working as a product manager in a telecom company, and uh, one day, just all of a sudden, I said, "What I'm really doing with my life? Like what I am actually doing?" And on the same day, I I resigned. That true story, and I just uh, thought, "What I'm gonna do?" And I said, in a, in a worst case scenario, what I can do is I can move to the living room and I can rent my bedroom on Airbnb. And this is the way I will be able to pay my expenses. I wasn't married back then. I had no responsibilities or whatsoever. I was uh, 
still waiting for my salary to come. As soon as my salary came and I said, I want to start something. I want to do something on my own. I want to start my own business. Uh, I went to the council. I was living in London at that time. And I went to the council and I said, how much it will be to have a pop-up stall uh, inside a market? And they told me 35 pound. And I said, that's fine. I had a stall and I uh, uh, went to the warehouse in a South Hall and I bought some mobile phone and accessories and I I just start running a stall outside inside the coal and I I remember my country manager came to me from the telecom company and said what you are doing I mean you was a product manager in our company and now you are standing on a stall today it's really strange I mean uh, I I mean your salary is really good and I said no I want to do something on my own and that's what I want to do it so from that stall, moving on, uh, I leased the shop uh, in Dalston, Kingsland. So most of the people who are Shamis from London, Gul, you are familiar from London as well. Uh, Dalston, Kingsland, it's in Hackney. So I had a shop. I had an internet cafe. I have a mobile phone shop close to the Barclays Bank there. And I had that shop for about seven years. And uh, to the point when the way I started the e-commerce was from that shop, I, I said, because it is paying my expenses, that's fine, but I'm not able to save much money. So I need to really find another way to make more money. And what can I do really? And that's, I said, well, I have a stock already inside my shop. Why not list this stock online and see how it's going to go? And uh, my parents as will say, well, leave that. You, was, you have a real business now. Why you are moving toward a business which is not even real? But I had to really diversify my income. I, need, I needed to find another source of income. So I started selling online uh, slowly, 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 slowly to, to the point uh, when I realized like 80% of my revenue was actually coming from just online. And I just waited for one year because in the business, you're never sure. Sometime your income can go up, some kind, sometime your income can really go down. So after uh, waiting one year, uh, to really understand how much money I'm consistently making per month. And then I just sold the business. And even from selling that physical business, I put all the money inside the e-commerce. And ever since then, I've just been a full-time full -time, full e-commerce seller. In the terms of your question of, is, did I have any hiccups during the business or anything like that? Uh, many of them. And I'm not really going to bore you with the details because, like, I don't want you to feel emotional, really. Don't, don't worry about that. But keep it short, keeping it short, like, there will be many things. And that's the way the businesses are. And that's the way the life is in general. But we just got to keep going. And one day, if I tell you five years from now, you will be here in this position. If I had a time machine, I, if I will show you, like, five years from now, you will be here if you just keep on doing what you are doing today then you will not give up. And that's like was the same. Many hiccups, but I just kept going. And then today I make good amount of money. I wish to make more, but I, I still am keep going. Th thanks for sharing that, Zayn. It's a big, big uh, move, especially as well, where if you have a steady, stable job and then, you know, to, to try something new and people and pairs would be very confused as to, to what, what, why, when you have a, a stability, why would you want to go in the, in the unknown? But I think ultimately it's some, you know, thanks guys for sharing some very inspiring stories and, you know, showcasing with uh, the audience. Hopefully you guys can see that nothing comes easy. Uh, nothing is guaranteed or a given and success is not coming tomorrow or day after, but it will, should one stick along for the, the long run. So thanks a lot guys, it's uh, some, you know, I myself feel quite quite inspired by hearing everyone's story. So thanks a lot for sharing um, that. Um, and hopefully it's uh, inspired a few people as well as to just keep staying persistent, keep uh, evolving, keep adapting and uh, not giving up when things get difficult. Great, and then moving on to the, the next uh, topic. If you were to start an online business today, how and where would you get started? Before we go into the answer, sorry, is in regards to guys, the questions you're pushing in, uh, we would definitely try to answer as many as possible at the end of the, the webinar and the talk. So please uh, uh, stick around and we will endeavor to answer all the questions. And as for the polls, please uh, answer as, as and when we, we throw them. It will be great to get your perspectives 
over there too. So regards to then, uh, if you were to start an online business today, how and where would you get started? Let's start with Mike. Um, so I'd have to say, I've got to say eBay. Um, for, for me, I, I've never used Amazon as, uh, as a seller. Um, so I, I can't really comment on Amazon. Um, but I think for simplicity uh, and having the traffic and the audio, I think eBay is definitely the way to go. But it, I suppose it depends on what products you're selling and what you want to and what you want to do. Um, but I've found plenty of success through eBay, and then I'd say you could, depending on what you're selling. So if it's clothes or something, you could you move on to Depop or Facebook Marketplace or something like that. Um, but I think one thing I would say and one thing I've learned is not to rely on one platform and even when you found that platform that you think is the one for you keep looking for other platforms as well because you never know when that tap will get turned off uh, and diversify in your business and make sure you've got multiple revenue streams because i've been in the, uh, the position before where we thought there's a potentially we could lose ebay uh, not for any fault of our own but uh, you just you just never know and um i've heard stories i, I I say I'm no expert with Amazon, but I've heard horror stories where people have sold products on Amazon and then Amazon have just turned that tap off and, and you, you can't sell that product anymore and, and people have relied on single products. Uh, so I would say diversify your business uh, and, and, and look at, find a simple platform to start with, but then don't get complacent with that platform and look at other platforms to sell on as well. Yeah, makes sense. I think key being diversifying there definitely because what works for one product may not work for another and just keeping it and naturally everyone will have their preference as to what's the right platform product uh, that will work in different scenarios. So yeah, um, th thanks Mike for sharing that. And uh, Dan, if you can go next uh, in regards to if you were to start an online business today, how or where would you get started? For sure. Actually, I, uh, I wanted to uh, jump off of what Mike was saying there. Uh, last year, I had one of my best-selling products got a um, on Amazon got a trademark infringement, which, uh, in my opinion, was a little bit like sketchy. But you don't really have a say uh, in a lot of these cases. Amazon will kind of they cut the head off the snake, you know, really quickly because that protects them. And so all of these products, it was like 6,000 units had to be removed. Uh, we lost that listing and the brand or the, this emblem had to be changed on every single unit before it could, you know, be sent back in with a new listing. So just losing the listing was a huge deal. Um, and so I like what Mike said there is, and I would add to that, not only diversify, but really practice like risk management, look into these things, look into, you have to get, I thought I knew these things well, like trademarking, uh, even copyrights. You really, you have to be an expert at different parts of your business before you have people running those sections. Um, so it is, it's just risk management. But uh, back to your question, Gul, on starting again. So I would have to have two, I would have to mention two things here. The first is if you are very okay being in the public eye, perhaps you love video, perhaps you like, perhaps you have something you really can teach others that others want to learn. I would say YouTube is a very, very fun business model that you can build on and, and uh, enjoy forever almost, you know, it's a very cool platform. But second is of course, with private label, that's where I would focus just from what I've seen or what I know. And I would focus on private label in, in different ways. So the first thing is I would focus on the US market before Europe. That's what I would do. And I did it in reverse. I did Europe, then US. But if you think about when you create a product and a listing, there's a lot of energy and money going into that. So what does that single thing produce for you? And a US product generally can produce a far higher 
uh, sales revenue, it can produce mm -hmm. more sales. And so that, that would be the first thing for me. I'd focus on higher price products because if you sell a $20 pair of headphones or a $120 pair of headphones, they have the same fulfillment fee. So this way you leverage fixed costs and your profit really goes up. And then I would order less. Like I said before, don't over order before you've proven that idea. Uh, once you've proved it, you can really move up. Focus on images, because in this world, people aren't touching it, smelling it, tasting it. It's the images. They have to be better than your product. And then I would be more aggressive with PPC. Don't be scared of running ads to rank because once you rank you can pull back on the ads and then you have those full profit sales so that would be the other thing is kind of when you when you kind of medium on that you end mm -hmm. up spending a lot more uh but those are just a couple of things that i would definitely do differently yeah it makes sense uh, i suppose uh I think in this scenario, it's uh, always good to to learn and see where the opportunity is. And then, as you mentioned, US proved to be a lot more successful, huge marketplace, and uh, has a lot of opportunity and challenges. But yeah, it's a lot more opportunity, I suppose. But it's uh, then kind of figuring out the the right product. And then, in regards to the Amazon infring copyright infringement, that definitely must not have been a nice experience. But that I've heard I've heard stories like that as well in the past, which can be quite quite annoying and hard to take but i suppose again it's uh, not used to, using that as a means to get too despondent and still adapting and finding ways right well i suppose uh cool i suppose that's one advantage of the uk and europe there's far mm. less you know litigation and mm. you know, it's a huge thing in the us and they're very very stern like they you can offer them a whole thing a strategy which will remove the infringement and they're just really strict. So just be careful of that uh, with sure. any marks on your, on your products. Yeah, no, well said. Um, and then Zane, if you can go next. So what do I have to do if I start from zero? That's a really good question. Uh, the first thing I will do is start because I know a lot of people who will think about it, who will uh, decide to run a business. They're just going to think, okay, Am I too late to start selling online or how much money do I need or I don't know about the products or I don't know this, I don't know that. Uh, we have a Shami, we have a Mike, we have a Dan, we have a Gul here. Uh, some of us have a YouTube channels and uh, I can guarantee you 99% of the information that you're going to need, you're going to find it freely from these guys' channel, like absolutely free. So your excuse of not knowing something, it's I, I don't really accept it. Uh, then the other thing is like, if you are starting today and if you think, am I too late to start selling online? And I, I can tell you like when the Jeff Bezos probably started and the fifth Amazon seller, when there was probably only five <laughs> people selling on Amazon, the sixth one came in the market and he probably said, no, I'm, I, I am too late because five people are already sell, uh, selling on Amazon. And, you know, I, I mean, people are always going to talk about that. So don't worry about it. The only thing you have to think about, like how many times your parents used to buy from online, how many times you buy online, and how many times you think your kids are going to buy online? Because leave the stats and statistics and everything. Uh, I, I, it's it's just a common sense. The sale for e-commerce is going to go up and up and up. So the first thing I'm going to do is just going to start. Like, don't listen to all negativity or anything. And if you don't know what to do, then you will have to spend a little bit of time learning how this whole process work. And it's not a rocket science. All you have to think about, okay, if Dan can do it, if Mike can do it, if Shimmy can do it, if Gul can do it, like what, what, like why I can't do it as well. And uh, the the biggest thing which I didn't had, which uh, a lot of you guys mentioned as well, when I started, there wasn't much information on a YouTube or Google that you can could just simply Google it, read or read it on a forum, or just fix the problem that you are facing. Uh, the biggest uh, things that you have, you can learn from other people's mistakes and don't do those things again. 
And in terms of selling a product, what products I start with, the first thing you have to really see, what do you really personally know? Not what makes a lot of money. Like that's, it's a different thing because it's going to be really hard for you to understand the audience uh, once you are going into a product where you don't know who those people are and why they are buying this product as well. So I always think about don't don't always try to find uh, the products to sell it to your customers. Uh, always I, I, on the top of my head, I, I lost those uh, quote. It's a quote where they say, uh, don't find the customers for your product. Uh, find the products for your customers. So understand who you want to sell it to first and then try to target those particular people. In my case, I understand mobile phone and accessories market really, really well. So I I don't personally struggle a lot to find the products to sell to those people because I understand the, those audience. Uh, so that's, I would say, this is how I will start. And I will just start. That's all from me. So the goal, I think he's having some kind of glitch. He will be back. Uh, Shimmy, if you can go next. Yeah, Gul is back. Gul, I was, I was, my, my wife. I was, I, was, I was taking over your job. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Zay. Yeah, no, I think I, I got only the last five seconds, I, uh, 10 seconds I, I missed. Was it, um, was it, sorry, was it too boring? No, it's amazing. <laughs> Ultimately, my, my Wi-Fi is not controlled by me. And no, he just uh, just decided to leave. I mean, I, 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 got, I got really offended, to be honest. <laughs> not at all. It's okay. my pleasure to be here with all you guys. And it's for me, okay. and all you know, you guys are all very inspiring. And okay. definitely something that we were quite, I've been quite excited about uh, to, to, you know, get involved in. But yeah, I suppose ultimately, you know, as you mentioned, getting started, the level of resource that's available today, you know, it's always going to get more competitive. It's always going to get more saturated. That's business and that's life. So that doesn't mean, you know, not to get started. It's ultimately an individual's choice. Uh, and especially with a few things you guys shared before is no one's had it simple and easy to, to get going and it takes time. Right. Um, and then, yeah, Shemi, if you can go next. Um, I would say, you know, what was the original question two businesses uh, to start now like what, what would you do differently uh sorry if you were just sign on amazon today how where would you get started uh, okay well firstly mm -hmm. i would do amazon um, yeah. i love amazon um but i have to agree with what mike said um amazon can very much be a massive headache um and when i started it was like a mild headache it's kind of become like a migraine now um in terms of their level of support and all of that kind of stuff and the hoops you had to jump through back then it was like one or two hoops now it's 30 hoops so if i'm being honest i would say well, firstly i would say um to anyone who wants to start now something do something that you're going to enjoy um don't chase the money um because you know at the end of the day you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna stop enjoying it the money's gonna become constant and you're gonna just feel like this is a waste of time right do something that you're going to enjoy um and the second thing is so i would say you know if i had to decide to start over or you know start from nothing i would have gone straight into youtube um i absolutely love youtube it is just so much fun i love creating videos um all that kind of stuff um i just it's just yeah it's amazing not just the, the 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 teaching and the business side of YouTube, but I also have a tech channel that I like as well. I just I just like making videos. Um, as well as that, I would say affiliate marketing. Uh, I don't know what I said affiliate marketing, um, but I think with YouTube, it's coupled with affiliate marketing, and um, that is one of the best ways to monetize a YouTube channel. Um, so if you are going to go with YouTube, again, don't go to YouTube thinking, oh, it's going to make me rich and look at all the people making a lot of money from it because you will be very disappointed uh, go with youtube because you enjoy being on camera or you know you like looking at yourself i don't know or you have uh, you you want to teach you want to you want to share a message you want to create content you want to create videos uh, maybe if you want to write i would say go and do a blog um, but most of these kind of creative paths 
are coupled with affiliate marketing. Um, and affiliate marketing can be quite um, quite good in terms of um, making money and stuff. And then again, if you do want a physical product business, then yes, Amazon is there. I agree with Mike. I love eBay. I've been selling on eBay for years as well. eBay is great. Um, a lot less hoops to jump through. Uh, you just feel like you're more in control um, and you're not constantly in a battle with eBay. If anything, you'd be more in a battle with PayPal, but they've kind of got a bit better now. Um, so if you do want to start a physical business, I would say eBay, Amazon, or potentially even um, kind of starting from scratch and creating like a Shopify store um, with a unique product that you can drop ship. Um, but I don't regret, you know, having an Amazon business. I liked having an Amazon business. And I probably would also, you know, have to do the Amazon business again, just because, you know, it's, it's, it's done really well. It's made a lot of money. It's all, it's like, it's just been great for me. It's, it's kind of kickstarted everything else. Um, but I certainly would have started YouTube a lot sooner, Philip marketing a lot sooner. And, uh, and yeah, that's what I would say, especially now in 2021, where not that it's oversaturated, because uh, I don't think it is. There's plenty of room for everyone. Um, there's billions of people on the planet to buy our products, so it's not really a problem there. Um, it's just in terms of what you enjoy, really. And like for me, I enjoy YouTube. I enjoy affiliate marketing. That's what I would recommend that. Brilliant. Thanks a lot for sharing this, Shimmy, and all the various options that you mentioned. And I think, guys, the key is there's various ways to, to sell online. As everyone's just mentioned, it's uh, just uh, being uh, knowledgeable about what you want and where the the audience is and what product is right for for the relevant audience and the relevant platform. So there's still and there was gonna there's gonna constantly be more and more opportunities, especially in the e-commerce space. So we'll move on to tips and recommendations for new and existing sellers. So Mike, if you wanna go, go next uh, in regards to sharing some tips and recommendations for new and existing sellers. Okay. Um first tip make sure you've got a good accountant so uh or <laughs> but yeah no 100 percent. that's uh, one of the, the things i've learned especially through having businesses in the past uh, and this is not just a plug for you guys but um uh, having a good accountant is definitely or if you've i think a lot of people when they set up especially i'm going from uh e i'm using ebay here as an example but um it's probably not first thing on people's minds. Uh, and then when they start realizing they've hit the threshold of um, that they've got to start paying some taxes and stuff like that, they're going to realize that they need to get an accountant and it's all done a last minute. Now, I would honestly say if you're just about to set up, start putting the feelers out there straight away, looking for an accountant, signing, like, sign up to you guys. Um, but yeah, that was that's definitely um, a, t a top tip. Uh, and then... Um, other things as well. I've I found staffing is probably you get to a point with the business where you've grown that business. You get to a point where you are the one man band. You're doing everything yourself. You're the marketing expert. You're uh, you're doing your accounting and books. You're you're doing the buying. You're doing the sourcing. All of that, uh, and you get to a point with that where you need to start getting staff and starting to employ people. And I I found that's probably one of the hardest things to do taking that that leap um but i think it's the only way to to grow that bit to grow your business um and you you can only you can only take on so much yourself so depends on where you want to be as a seller if you want to if you're happy with just making enough money to get by it depends what your goals are um and again setting goals setting targets <coughs> going back to what i said earlier on but uh, I, I've always said I want to take my, billi my, my business into the millions. And uh, for that, you can't do that on your own. You need to get staff. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of where the, the position where I'm at with my business now. We've employed some people and it's, uh, it's starting to grow. Yeah, it makes sense, I suppose. Managing numbers is never a bad thing and always, always help. And, uh, you know. Uh, individuals and companies can can support that and yeah I think adding the right personnel naturally is uh, a key element of where one can grow the business um, Dan if you want to go next for sure I, I totally agree with Mike on accountants they will you'll think you have calculations right and they'll show you very different 
Uh, so that's a huge one. And I think on hiring is also a big deal. Um, and if you do find a good person, hang on to that person. It's very difficult to find uh, people who can work the way you want them to work. So when you do, really, you have to value those individuals. Another big thing I would say, kind of leading on to that, it reminded me of, of hiring for uh, social media because personally, I don't love building uh, social media. I do really enjoy YouTube, but I don't enjoy a lot of platforms, especially if it's like brand building. And I think for a lot of new sellers, they should really focus on that aspect as well, is getting that brand onto social media. And that's kind of the most cost effective way, because once you have that audience, you can scale so much quicker. You have individuals you can sell the first product, second product too. And if you have capital and you don't want to build that, then look at influencers, look at influencer marketing. It's huge. And you will be able to find individuals who can promote your product on those platforms. Uh, but it's often quite difficult to get them to commit because they are inundated with requests. So uh, that's another thing you'll have to have strategies to get through. Uh, but those are two big things. And then the for existing sellers, I would say double down on what's working. So if you have five products, two of which are kind of just breaking even, double down on those three that are really working. Because if you can order more, the manufacturing cost goes down per unit, but maybe you can even move to full container loads. And when you get to FCL, you're really saving, you're almost shipping 40% for free. Because once you're filling a container like 60% with other people's shipments, you're actually paying almost as much for the full container. So anyway, you're going to have scale. And in this way, one of the bigger things is, of course, that you're going to have higher profit per unit. But another big thing, especially now, is you have a lot of people running out of stock. And what people don't factor in is if you can stay in stock when the competitors run out, there's a lot to be made in that period of time, uh, not only in sales, but also in ranking your product and competing, particularly if you're behind. Let's say you enter a market where they have more reviews, they've been there longer. If you can catch them in the out of stock positions, it's a very good position to be in as well. Um, and that might even include having a 3PL on the side. Uh, but those are just a couple of things. Double down on what's working um, and cut out the fat, you know, and focus on those that um, work really well. Because 20%, it's kind of like that Pareto principle, 80% of, of revenue comes from 20% of the product line. So at some point you have to start really narrowing down to what's working best for you. Yeah, makes sense. I think actually uh, narrow it down. I think that that's um, well said because actually it's better to focus on things that are working and really refining the the growth of the business as opposed to constantly needing to diversify. But at the same time, actually, what what works for more people is uh, where you know the the focus is solidified more so um great um zane if you want to go next yeah so tips for uh, new sellers and old sellers that would be uh first of all uh is there any particular tool or anything which can make your life easy i will not have any hesitation by all means i'm i'm subscribing to it i'm signing up for it and speaking of tools like uh, accounting and everything, other than knowing like how much profit you're making, it's also a legal requirement as well. So if you're a new seller, if you're an old seller, uh, I would, without any hesitation, subscribe to, uh, I mean, uh, Awesome as well. You can go to awesome.com or somebody will put the link inside the chat as well. Uh, that's the the number one thing I will I will do because Look, if you you need to keep a record of each and everything that you sell, which is a bookkeeping, and at the end of financial year, you need to do your tax return anyway. So why not have the 
complete package all at one place and still be cost effective at the same time as well. Uh, it, it's an absolute necessity for each and every e-commerce seller. Uh, the other things in the terms of tips and everything, I will, I will second uh, Dan as well. And I say, whatever is working at the moment for you, double down on those things and have no hesitation uh, in, in the terms of doubling down uh, when it comes to whatever is working for you as well. Uh, along with that, the other, just a, a short thing, which which I will like to add is, uh, uh, it's, it's a business where we will have to take a lot of risk and 70% uh, uh, of my revenue comes from Amazon and uh, no running no business, a, a YouTube channel or affiliate marketing, nothing is easy out there as well. Uh, I, 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 I highly recommend and I see I, I, I think 25 people who are watching, they come here because they want to run an e-commerce business. And I will say it's a, it's a, you have to take a risk or otherwise you're gonna lose a chance. That's the, the way I think about it. Brilliant, thanks for sharing. Hello. Yeah, that's that's all from me. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. yeah, I can hear you, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Thanks for sharing that, just uh, conscious of time. Shimmy, if you can go next and then perhaps we may go into Q&A shortly after. Sure. Um, tips and tricks for new sellers um, and existing sellers. I would say I agree with everyone in terms of managing your money um, with an accountant, a bookkeeper of some sort. Um, definitely, I mean, for me, the biggest benefit of using an accountant is the fact that I've saved an absolute fortune on tax and knowing what can be taxed, what can't be taxed and all of that kind of stuff, which has been a lifesaver. Um, and obviously all legal ways, um, but just so many people don't realize, you know, like especially during COVID, a lot of people were working at home, which means part of their house costs, uh, you know, they're working from a house office. So a lot of their house costs could actually be um, um, expenses for the, for the business. Um, just a lot of things. So that too. And then um, for new sellers, uh, tips and tricks off the top of my head. I don't know. I would say, I'd say, it's, I'd say just go for it. It's hard to give a tip or a trick um, because it totally depends on what you're doing, what business you want to start, all those different types of things. Um, but I'd say just, just go for it, you know, and if you fail, that's fine. Fail fast, move on. Um, for existing sellers, it's probably a bit easier to give some advice. I would say for existing sellers, don't ever think that you're above, you know, learning more. Um, so even if you're, you know, making a fortune, don't, you know, think, oh, I, I don't need to watch this YouTube. I don't need to read this book. I don't need to, to, to learn anymore. I'm, I'm at the peak. I, I, I know everything, right? Always try and be, you know, the humble one in the room. Um, always try and learn more and, and, you know, like you've got these people like Warren Buffett who literally read a book every single week. Um, you would think they don't need to do that, but he understands the value of education. And I don't just mean education through courses because I, I don't remember who, but someone said, um, that literally everything you need is pretty much online now anyways for free. Um, so you don't really need a course if you don't want one. Um, and then more importantly, you've got books, books have absolutely everything. Um, so regardless of if you're making 10 grand, 100 grand, a million every single year, um, just keep learning and, and you'll see, you'll, you'll, you'll have um, light bulb moments where you'll be able to be like, oh, I'm going to try this. And now that you have more money, you have the means to actually implement it. You'll, you'll see it will really, really work. So, um, so yeah, those are, the, those are the, the, the two tips and tricks, I should say, for uh, sellers, new and old. Perfect. Thanks for sharing that, um, Shimmy. So I just want to have one, one last uh, thing I want to throw at you guys, and then we'll go into Q&A. So uh, I'll ask everyone to make one prediction for the future of e-commerce and the challenge that if someone's already said one, you'll have to come up with another one if, if you guys are for it. All right. Cool. Perfect. So All the right. first one, I, I, I will go first. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I, I still think in, in the terms of e-commerce, uh, the 
still the office supplies are because a lot of people will be still working from home as well, not just during the pandemic. So if you come up with some kind of standing desk, because I've been recently looking a lot on Amazon uh, or some kind of mechanism which can move your desk up and down or many office supplies or many office furniture as well, I think that is it, it's still going to be huge in future as well. Oh, nice one. Um, uh, Mike, if you can go next. So the future of e-commerce, I think like if we haven't learned anything from the whole COVID situation, I think like that was, that it was, that it was that that spurred me to, to push my website, to push, uh, put everything I've got online on my own platform. I think if, if anything now it, it's, it's needed more than ever. And I think the, the high street is definitely dead. And you can see that by yeah, the amount of sales that I've done through Amazon and things like that. I think, yeah, it's uh, it's only going to get bigger. And people think, like you, we was talking earlier on about, is it have I joined the bandwagon too late? Is it is have I missed the boat? No, uh, it, it, it's it's literally we're still at the we're still relatively at the beginning of all this. I think there's so much more to do, and and you've got the likes of um, a lot of augmented reality and things like that. So, so much more to come. Uh, thank you, Mike. And uh, yeah, um, Shimmy, if you want to go next, and then we'll finish up with Dan. Um, I'd say uh, a prediction for me. Um, well, I think the, the online, the e-learning space mm -hmm. is going to be worth nearly a billion every single day in probably like the next five to 10 years. Um, so I would say if you have the skill, and I don't mean like make money courses, I'm not talking about that. Um, I'm just talking about learn, uh, um, um, teaching anything. You know, if you play the guitar, you, you're a good photographer, you know Photoshop. Um, if you have a skill, um, see if you can create a digital course and see if you can sell it. Um, just make sure you sell it ethically, none of the fake guru stuff. And um, if you don't have any set skills at the moment, work on something five years 10 years down the line and then create it because it's only getting bigger and bigger and if you look at the, the how it's worked in the past and you look at the trajectory of where it's going it literally is going to be i think they said by 2025 it's going to be worth 325 billion um which is nearly a billion a day which is a ridiculous industry um for something that is literally very simple as shooting a couple of videos and teaching something to someone that might not know it um, so that's what I think is a cool yeah. That, that sounds very exciting. De definitely, I think actually content consumption is only going to increase, and yeah. need for better and better content uh, to be out there. And then Dan, if you can finish off with uh, your prediction for e-commerce in the future. Yeah, Mike took the augmented reality one, but I do think that that's going to be big. I think you're going to have a way sort of like how you could, you know, newer features uploading videos to listings, you're going to be able to upload an augmented reality. Uh, what do you call that 3D rendering of the product? So probably you're going to see a whole industry around that for like the cameras, which can do that around your product, etc. So I think that's going to be a big one where people can put on their you know, goggles and actually see around the whole product. I don't know, maybe you walk around the product. Uh, so I think that's going to be a big one. And then uh, omni-channel shopping, I think, will grow. So when you search for something, you look on Amazon. I think there's something like 80% of customers price check on Amazon. But then you also watch YouTube videos on it. You also maybe read blogs on it. So I think the fusion of those channels will become greater uh, and make it a bit more seamless than opening like different tabs, different searches. So I think that's going to become much closer. Like we do have videos at the bottom of Amazon listings, but it's kind of disjointed. I think that's going to somehow become more seamless. Um, and then the last thing I was actually speaking to a family member about the other day is speed. Speed is such a big thing. I will spend a lot more if it comes today. Like I will like, and you have a lot of customers like that. Not everyone, 
but customers will pay more if it comes fast. And I think we undervalue speed. That's why Prime does so well. A lot of customers just won't buy it if it's not Prime. So speed, I think, is going to increase. I think, you know, now you have like one hour delivery in some cases. But I think that's going to be a huge, huge uh, competitive point between different platforms. And I think we're going to see an increase in that for sure. Yes, yeah, some, some great points there. And I think uh, everyone wants everything today, tomorrow, next hour. Yeah, and impatience is only going to grow. <laughs> Place, place <laughs> it in my hand now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I want to think and it should be here. I take my money. Maybe, maybe with drones. Yeah, exactly. Um, cool. Just conscious of time. So what we'll try and do is uh, aim one question at everyone. So uh, there's something just come in uh, from a makeup. Uh, to Shimi, what do you guys think of live shopping apps, for instance, and live drip, drip shopping, drop shipping, sorry, oh, yes. live <laughs> drop shipping, sorry. Shimi, do you want to take that? Or is uh, Emeka asking yourself? A live drop shipping or live streaming apps? What do you guys think of live shopping apps? What does that mean, well, live shopping? I haven't seen one, to be honest. So I suppose it could be she may be... Uh, they may be referring to live streaming and selling products. Oh. Uh, live stream, I, yeah. I presume. Yeah, why not? I mean, tons of people are doing it on Twitch, you know? So people selling merch, selling products um, during their, their Twitch streams, that kind of stuff. I don't know if that's, mm -hmm. what, I don't know if that's what this person means. Um, but if it is, then, I mean, I don't see why not. The only thing is you're going to, this is all dependent on the size of your audience. So if you don't have an audience mm -hmm. size, then you're not going to get any sales. Sure. Yeah, makes sense. And then uh, let's go to, yes, so she was, uh, the maker uh, was referring to live streaming, I presume, okay. and selling uh, via live stream. Cool. Uh, Dan, doesn't high-priced products require higher inventory costs? Well, not Okay. Not necessarily. Yes, generally, but not necessarily if you do a lower quantity. So if you have, a, you know, a very inexpensive product, you can buy it for two dollars and you buy, you know, thousands of them it would be equivalent to, say, a ten dollar product, but in lower quantity, which I recommend anyway to reduce risk. Mm -hmm. Overall, uh, yes, if you order the same amount of inventory, of course, it will be more. But I think you de-risk yourself on multiple levels because the chances of higher profit are a lot higher. If with low price items on Amazon, you got to pay them. There's a lot of fees and you end up, when you actually look at the profit at the end of the day, it's like, wow, like, you know, I'm breaking even, perhaps even on first orders making losses. You want to get the business profitable as soon as possible. So I do recommend it for that reason. And then also, a lot of sellers aim at those lower points. So if you go, you know, for sold prices around 40, there's a lot less competition there too. Um, but yes, if you order the same amount, it will be more. Sure, fair enough, makes sense. And then uh, for you, Mike, next, what are the key indicators of a fad product? What are some of the most effective tools for identifying them? I don't think that really applies to me as much. I think some of the Amazon sellers would probably be better answering that question. Um, I, I don't really have any fad products. Uh, I think, like, if I'm right in thinking, the fad products like, uh, for example, things like loom bands and things that are, are, are hot at the moment, um, and then, like, I don't know much about them. I wouldn't, I'm, I'm not, that's not my thing. <laughs> well, I will come back with another question for you. Um, Zane, do you want to take this one? Is it best to sell multiple, multiple products under one store slash brand name? Well, once you're selling on Amazon or eBay, I, I don't think customer really care about your brand name. I, 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 I highly doubt it. But it, it is really, really important because if you 
are someone you want to scale your business and you want to have your own website, like Mike was mentioning before, or you want to have your Shopify store, then obviously uh, you can sell multiple products under one brand name. But uh, other than that, I, I don't think like for an uh, independent seller, if you are just starting out or if you are an established seller, customer, I mean, do, do not really care about what the name of your brand is nowadays. I mean, they, they just care about the products and reviews, really. Sure, makes sense. Okay, so give you one more mic. What is the minimum ROI and what ROI do you target? These are from oh, the, thing, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can answer that, what kind of ROI are you typically looking for? What kind of indicators that you're seeking? That uh, is from Lydia. And what is the best price range in which you sell your product? So uh, again, I think it varies on product. Um, I and also your operating costs and things like that. So um, I, I would always, again, with me, because it's more antiques and, and memorabilia and things like that, I would always be looking to make uh, like a 50% profit margin, a, a minimum on everything that I sell. Um, and then, um, but it just, it all depends on how much you're spending on a product and, and how much you're intending to sell it for. So it, it does vary with, with, within my business. Sure, makes sense. And then I suppose a few other questions have come across and where to source products from is, is China the, the main area to source products from? What are your guys' thoughts on sourcing the best places to source products from? I think, can I say something about China? So yeah, sure. I, did, I did find that um, this is relating to eBay, so I don't know how it, how it goes with Amazon, but I get a lot of people ask me on my Instagram and stuff like, what's the best product to buy from China? Now, again, that's not something that I do, but uh, with, with regards to eBay, what you find is a lot of the Chinese sellers and manufacturers will sell products on eBay and they will promote them listings. And when you promote a listing on eBay, it's down to you to choose how much you promote that listing by. And, and I found that some of the Chinese sellers are, are very highly promoting their items, almost at 90% they are paying to eBay to promote that item. Um, and I think a lot of people think they can just buy that iPhone case or uh, and buy them by the thousand and sell them on eBay and make a massive profit out of it. But they don't realize that actually the sellers, the people that you're buying them from on Alibaba and AliExpress and all them places are actually putting them on eBay and they're heavily promoting them above your items. And I, I, I found, like, I did dabble with this a, a, a long time ago, but I found that's why I chose the, the line of business that I was going to go into is I, I decided to sell secondhand items and, and things from charity yeah. and car boots because the, the competition was less. And I don't know if you guys have found that as well um, with Amazon and I, I don't know what products are your, your, your main product lines, but I, I found with China, like you say, it's a very stiff competition. Yeah. So, Mike, just to add a little bit, because I you, you touched on mobile phone and accessories, and that's my thing, really. Uh, yes, there are Chinese product, uh, Chinese supplier, they are selling it from China, but the main difference is there is no way they are able to compete with the shipping time that we can do in UK as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the only thing, and the buyer are actually willing to pay a little bit extra money sure. to get their product shipped a lot. So I'm not really worried about Chinese competition. So that's the, I, I don't think anybody should be, uh, especially if it's a product like a charging cable or a case where the, where the customer really need it as soon as possible. But in the terms of some kind of craft or some novelty kind of things, yes people are willing to wait on those kind of things so yes shipping time doesn't matter in those sure and then shimmy where else are good places to source products from uh is it china the main one other place oh it can depend on the product but what would be your piece of advice on that um for, for us it's been china mainly um however we have sourced products in the uk as well and that's been really really good because uh, we've been able to source products in the uk get it sent to us next day <laughs> Um, and then get it up on Amazon literally within three days, uh, which has been absolutely amazing. Um, yes. We did that for a whole range of products. Um, it, it wasn't even that it was more expensive because it was such a cheap item and it had such a large markup. Um, it worked quite well. But at the end of the day, I think if you're going for like mass a lot of products um, made to a bit of a higher standard even, then yeah, I think 
I think China is a, a good place to go. You shouldn't be worried about ordering from China. Really, it's not a big deal. Cool, sounds good. And then Dan, finally, if you can just give a few quick, a few other pieces, and then we'll wrap up after. Sure. Uh, and Gold, this was to do with China, sourcing from China or other places, correct? Yes. So it's China has been kind of the, the main area, I suppose, in the e-commerce where a lot of people source from. Is that the main one to focus on or the other ones that one can also find good products from in terms of countries? Yeah, I think Alibaba is, you know, the biggest one for sure, but it doesn't only list Chinese suppliers. You can find a lot of great suppliers from Vietnam, which is really starting to grow as a manufacturing hub. You can even find US suppliers or, or British suppliers or German suppliers on Alibaba. So you could source from anywhere. Depends on your product type. In some cases, it can be really beneficial to be you know, made in the US or made in the UK. And people will pay a lot more for that, uh, particularly perhaps where safety is a concern or quality or durability. However, in a lot of markets, China is probably going to be the best simply because, and I mean with private label, bulk manufacturing, because they are just the most competitive. It's not even close. And so if you, you know, you're probably in this to make money, they are probably going to be able to offer you the best margins, but not in all cases. Like if people will pay more for made in UK or made in US product, the margins will be there and they could be even higher. So it really depends. You could source locally, uh, mm -hmm. but overall for most sellers, and if you want to keep it simple, I would say Alibaba with uh, suppliers in China because they know this process very well, especially if you're doing like private label on FBA. They already know what FNSKUs are. They're ready, they're ready for you. So um, you have to factor that in as well, at least in the beginning. Yeah, makes sense. It's quite refreshing to know that from, it's probably one of the biggest platforms out there when it comes to B2B e-commerce. And uh, yeah, there's uh, a lot of countries out there. Um, so um, finally, guys, if you can let uh, the people know where they can find you and a closing remark, uh, just a one sentence you want people to, to take, take away with them after the talk today. So Shimmy, if you want to start, just um, one sentence where people can find you. You can find me on YouTube, Shimmy Morris, S-H-I-M-M-Y, weird name. But you can find me on YouTube. Um, closing remark is just, you know, do something that you, re you really enjoy. Um, don't just, you know, get sucked into the Garage Quick schemes. And, uh, and yeah, go for it. And if it takes a, a little bit longer, then that's absolutely fine. And if you want to watch any of my videos, I post pretty much daily when I can. Um, and, yeah. Cool. Thank you, Shimmy. And then Zane, if you want to go next. So any platform, uh, if it's a YouTube, social media, wherever, uh, just hi, Zen Shah, wherever you are. And uh, if you got nothing better to do than watch my videos, they are not very useful. <laughs> so that's, I will add on that. Uh, and also on the top, uh, what last thing I would say about anybody who is an e-commerce seller or anyone who want to become an e-commerce seller, uh, that would be, guys, it's not too late. And uh, the, there are tons of things that you can learn for free for on, uh, online as well. And the way I, I, I look at it that... Let's say you want to go from London to Scotland, just giving one example, I will keep it short. Uh, normally people use a Google map, they use a, a Waze uh, and they navigate uh, through the roads and everything. Okay. Consider, consider that YouTube video a navigation, but at the end of the day, what you have to realize, you are the one, you are the driver. You are the one who are driving it. You need to make sure you have enough petrol you, you need to make sure you have enough tire pressure as well and this is something that you learn in the process as well but you won't be able to learn as if you are not in the process you will be able to figure out a lot of things and if you kind of feel like that you don't know where to go then the navigation can help and there are 
tons of YouTube channels, uh, and uh, like any anybody right here, everybody have a YouTube channel. Uh, go ahead and watch e every one of those. It, it all comes down to how much patience you will have to learn from these guys as well. Uh, and I wish you best of luck. Thank you, Zane, for for that. And then Mike, if you wanna just add a few things there, okay. and where can people find you? Well, guys, you can find me on YouTube as Mike Barnett, and my website is uh, treasuresoftime.co.uk. Um, and my advice is, look, I restarted my life at nearly 40. Uh, it's net, like Zane said, it's never too late. Uh, you've got to be in it to win it. So like, if you want to start, like it's this, same with everything. People are saying about crypto and Bitcoin, and I wish I was in on it at the beginning, but it's there's, there's never too late. Get in, like just start it. Uh, and also, again, put down that PlayStation controller, turn off the TV and actually like research what you want to do uh, and, and use that time wisely and use that time to uh, put into your dream and what you want to do rather than just making excuses or don't make excuses. Just do it. Just do it. That's it. Mike. And then finally, Dan, if you can uh, let the people know where to find you and your closing remark. Yeah, for sure. Just Dan Rogers on YouTube, just like the name over here, just below me. Uh, but closing remarks, I would say overall, just I think we have a really good mix of closing remarks because, you know, Shimmy was talking about doing what something you're passionate about that you're interested in doing that you want to do that's going to fire you up. Uh, and I think the key is infusing that with self-belief and understanding you can. So, you know, and not one of those speeches, you know, Miss America speeches, but really to, if you can see someone who is somewhere where you want to be or doing something you want to do, then you can do that. This was a big, this was actually something for me. And I think it's in a lot of psychology with new sellers or new entrepreneurs. And it's that my product won't sell because it's mine. You know, those sell, but mine won't sell. It's like a thing that we we have in all different areas. It doesn't just have to be e-commerce. But the thing is, the customer doesn't care. The market does not care. If you do it better, the market will buy it. And you have to build that self-belief that you can also do it. Um, and again, I think that's the key with get going. And Zane said this well is start because you'll get the first product up. It will start selling whether it does really well or not, it will sell. And then you'll be like, okay, I have that extra confidence. I can do this. It actually works. I sent an item there and it's old. So it's just about breaking those barriers down. Um, and even with YouTube, I remember I was on YouTube for like two years and I didn't even have a, a thousand subs. But then I started focusing a bit more on it, sharing what I was learning, and it, it builds up over time. So I think as uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger said, small wins build confidence, and that's what allows you to move forward. So those would be my last remarks there. Um, but, yeah, back to you, Gil. Thank you, Dan. And, uh, yeah, uh, well said, lots of great points. Um, I would like to thank uh, everyone uh, who's joined on, on, on my side. Uh, I represent Awesome, and um, thanks for all the guys here sharing awesome stories, amazing stories, and well, for everyone who's been here, hopefully they took some inspiration, some actionable uh, guidances that the guys have shared, and I think the key is to, to look at the bigger picture as opposed to the, the short term and seeing how there's always a way and then, you know, four different stories, four different ways where, you know, the guys have really kept pushing, kept finding ways to achieve their dreams and it's it's been quite inspiring. So I would like to really thank everyone who's joined. Thank you, Shimmy Morris. Thank you, Zane Shah. Thank you, Dan Rogers. Thank you, Mike Barnett. It's been a pleasure uh, being in your everyone's company. And then uh, as for, uh, we will be sharing everyone's links by email to the registration to the registration so you'll find all the links on the way to find everyone we yeah, are wishing everyone a great evening and thank you uh, everyone for joining and uh, hopefully a great week and amazing month ahead for for everyone thank you guys